done it again! The Marlins win it! 41st comeback. How do you guys keep doing this? <laughs> you know, I mean, we've done it so many times, so yeah, that was, that was exciting. The drought is over! 20 years of waiting has come to an end here in Pittsburgh! It's time to party in Miami! Action! Here we are, baby! Hello and welcome into our first edition of Marlins Rerun. Steven Strom, Kyle Seeloff. It's great to have you aboard here with us. So many awesome moments in 2023 for the Marlins. 41 comeback victories, a playoff berth for the first time in a full season since 2003. But today we are talking about the first ever cycle in Marlins history, and it belongs to Luis Arise, and it came on that April 11th day in Philadelphia. To really set the scene, the Marlins were 4-7, and seven, and I know it was the beginning of the year, but you, you, know, you start fast and they say, oh, well, calm down, you, the season just started. But if you start slow, it, it can get ugly pretty quickly. So the Marlins in a position here against a divisional opponent. They wanted to win this one here to, in Philadelphia. Luis Arise um, does something special, and it really was a sneak peek of what we were going to see for the entire season. Yeah, I think so, and I think it's it's interesting to look back, and I think that's kind of fun with what we're doing here, and you know, working in conjunction with the terrific documentary that's coming out here with the Marlins. That looking at the season in, in its entirety and all the fun that we had in breaking down particular moments. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the Luis Arise cycle, I think you have to go back a little bit because you mentioned a team that was four and seven. Nobody had expectations for the team coming into the season and they start four and seven and it's rocky and there's a new manager a first year manager who had never managed before who had a ton of experience in new players and you 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 look for monumental moments or symbolic moments in a season that you look back on sure. when it's all said and done and you feel like wow like right like that catapulted them a little bit and there is no doubt it's kind of fun actually going back and looking back you know, six, seven months ago now, taking a look at that night and the way it transpired. And I do think within reason, it propelled them as well. It was a team. They were 11 games in, playing their 12th game of the season. They got absolutely blown out of the ballpark the night before. Sandy Alcantara had one of the worst starts of his career. Allowed 18 the, to 3. Right. And he allowed the second most hits he had ever allowed in an outing. Tied a career high with 10 hits and a very short outing. I think that's very interesting to look back on, the way things transpired with Sandy this season that ultimately led to the Tommy John surgery, and he's out for all sure. of the next year. But right, so, you know, your, your reigning Cy Young Award winner the night before gets his tail kicked. You fall to four and seven. You just, you don't have any traction. And then you got this new guy, Luis Arise, who's sitting 500, and then obviously he had a very special night. So let's go through how it happened because... It, a cycle is special always in itself, but uh, Luis Arise led off this game with a double. He uh, had a line out to center field his following at bat, so he was one for two going into the sixth inning. I mean, you needed to have a bunch of things happen for the cycle. Of course, you need to do it by yourself, but you also have to have your team bat around. You have to get those opportunities to be one for two going into the sixth inning, and then we start to see the hits come through. He has the triple in the sixth he has the home run in the seventh and of course in the eighth very symbolic off Andrew Bellotti to get a single uh, a classic Luis Arise opposite field single he had 160 of those that led all of Major League Baseball but I guess what stood out to you uh, about his particular milestone night for Arise well he, you're right he did need a little help they had to bat around in the sixth and the eighth inning uh, nearly they sent eight guys to the plate in the eighth inning they had to hit around in the sixth inning if they don't score, what, seven runs there from the sixth through the eighth inning, he's probably There's not no going to get the opportunity. Right. But, you know, again, I think you do have to rewind a little bit. And in hindsight, nobody should have been surprised that he hit for a cycle because he came into that game hitting 500 through 11 yep, games. Yep, yep. He had not hit a home run. He hits his first home run, not to mention it was his first career homer to the opposite field, which I thought was an interesting footnote from that game. But a guy that came in hitting 500 in the in the season right so you know it was it was an unbelievable start I don't know if anybody should have just been surprised by it because that was what was crazy to me I was totally not surprised by a rise hitting for the cycle given what he had done to start the season I mean it was incredible the start that he had and you know he found himself in Miami after it was tough to swallow a trade sending a terrific starting pitcher to Minnesota mm -hmm. and Pablo Lopez 
but the Marlins made a terrific move over the winter, and not just specifically the cycle, but the impact that he had on this team this season was incredible. This was really a sneak peek of some of the awesome moments that we were going to get in 2023. And I want to go back to your call in that eighth inning. So let's revisit that really quickly. I have it here that we'll be able to watch it together here, Kyle, and I know the audience will as well. May we see history on this Tuesday night in Philadelphia. A single away from a cycle. Here's the pitch. Swing it a line drive. Left field. History in Philly. <laughs> Luis Arise has hit for the first ever cycle in Marlins franchise history. So, again, this is four and seven. This is game 12 here for yeah. Miami. This is your first year at the time as a radio voice. I mean, uh, what was that like for you to call that? And I guess just uh, to have that so early hmm. in the season. Yeah, I mean, it's, like? I mean it's, it's, it's cool. Um, I mean, selfishly, I was like, don't make a mess of it. Right, It'd be right. very short, sweet, and to the point with whatever you say. So something that will forever be a part of the franchise's history. Don't ramble, shut your mouth, get out of the way, and let the rest um, take care of itself. But just an amazing moment, yep. and truly what was an amazing season filled with unbelievable highlights, arise the first of many. Um, and it's, you know, it, it just, to me, it, it, it set the stage for so much more um, to come throughout the course of the 2023 season. We wanted to dive into this uh, cycle, as much nerd information as we could give you. And I actually wrote down the exit velo on his hits. Uh, his double was 98.8 miles per hour. His triple was 92.1 miles per hour. His home run was 96.4 miles per Which hour. Which they're lucky he was in Philly because that 96 mile an hour opposite field homer is not leaving many ballparks. It, it, that, you know, again, it's funny to look at it. And then the single, 92.1 miles per hour. Again, Luis Arise isn't known for his exit, exit velo, but I think uh, to have that no number uh, over 100, uh, I'm not sure if we, we're going to see that, honestly. Uh, for a long time. Yeah, I mean, maybe not, but it's funny to me because going back, and again, I think you have to really backtrack before you get to the cycle. The offseason acquisition of Luis Arise, who was very new to Marlins fans, who went to play in the World Baseball Classic, mm -hmm. and he had that incredible game in which he hit two homers right here at Lone Depot Park that were, I'm sure, were well over 100 miles an hour, and he muscled up, and I think it was the first time that Marlins fans had an opportunity to look at this guy and, like, Luis Arise, like he's ours, right? And not, not just for this year, but for years to come. And to me, that even kind of set the stage in fair or not, an expectation mm -hmm. for what to expect when you're on that stage in front of 38,000 playing for your country to do what he did. It set the stage and it created an expectation for Marlins fans what to expect when the season started. And obviously, he did not disappoint. He was hitting 500 through 11 games. He hits for the cycle, the first one in franchise history. I I incredible, monumental, organizational, franchise-changing night in Philadelphia. But th that, that, to me, is what was kind of special about all that. And a guy that doesn't have the power, but he hits his first opposite field homer. But prior to in the World Baseball Classic, he was muscling up and hitting him in the second deck uh, at, at Lone Depot Park. So, yeah. you know... Gosh, it, it couldn't, I'll say this, it could not have started better for Luis Arise. His career as a Miami Marlin could not have started any better, given, fair or unfair, the expectation that he created for himself. Yep. Because don't forget, when it's all said and done, he became the first ever player in Major League Baseball history to win a batting title in consecutive seasons in two different leagues, right? So he's coming off a batting title championship in Minnesota. And there's a lot of expectation when he comes here when you trade a controllable young starting pitcher in Pablo Lopez. Luis Arise, when he comes to Miami, he's got to show up. Absolutely. And he showed up in a massive way. Again, it was what, July? And we're still talking about a guy hitting 400. It was incredible. And he finishes the 2023 batting 354. 10 home runs. He showed some power. Late, uh, well, late, some in, the late in the year. Late in the year. 69 RBIs, a bunch of career highs, and like you mentioned, another batting title. And Skip talks about it. some guys, they either run to the stage or they run from it or yeah. run to the fire or run from it. And it felt like Luis Arise. Day in and day out, uh, you knew what you were going to get from him. He batted leadoff. He batted second. Yeah. He was batting third, Kyle. And defensively, I think, was one of his uh, 
brighter spots as well. People thought that that was a big question mark. I thought he was sensational at second base. Well, the, there was a question mark coming over, and the, 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 apparently the Twins Didn't were not sold that. on his defense. Right. Where do we play this guy? Right. You know, he had been injury-prone lower half at second base. They moved him to first baseman. Obviously, he does not kind of profile as a first baseman with you know, big, strong power. Maybe, you know, he's not too quick on his feet. He flashed some terrific glove work at second base for the Marlins this season. To me, one of the most important things about Luis Arise this year, even go further back, and I think it's important that you have to start last spring. We have talked so much about the manager, Skip Schumacher. Mm -hmm. There was a culture put in place and that we're going to play for each other, and if people are going to pay money to watch us play, we are not going to go out there and embarrass ourselves. And there's one thing to me that really sticks out about Luis Arise's season. That son of a gun posted almost every single day. When I tell you, when he was on the injured list late in the year, he was hurt. With the sprained ankle, the, that probably, to me, I, I do not know this. If that's April or May, you probably don't see him for four to six weeks. Mm. Seriously. That guy played through a lot. To win another batting title, to play through the injuries, to get himself back in a position where he could play in the postseason for this team, to me, speaks volumes not only about him, but the culture that the Marlins are really trying to put in place. That put yourself on the line. You're playing for your teammates. Yep. You're playing for an organization that has had nearly no success in the last two decades since 2003, if you exclude the truncated 2020 season. That's what they're building. And Luis Arise is a massive part of that moving forward because new guys that come in, young guys that come up through the system, they're going to look to him and, Absolutely. hey, your butt this hurts a, a little bit coming. You know what? Geez, my hamstring hurts a little bit today. Go get a little ice on it and get out there. Yep. Because that dude's doing it. That dude's won two batting titles. He's been in the playoffs in two consecutive seasons. He's out there. That's the culture that you start to create. And um, there's no better guy really getting to know him in a short amount of time, I guess over eight months. But goodness, I mean, Marlins fans have to be very, very happy about it having this guy here for the long haul. The first ever cycle in Marlins franchise history, Luis Arise uh, stamped his name in the books early on in this season. And I think it's also would be smart for us to, to look at some of the Marlins hitters in, across the franchise history because there's been some really good ones. Miguel Cabrera, uh, Hanley Ramirez, you, you've had a, a lot of a plethora of talent that you maybe think, oh man, he didn't get there yet or what, why he didn't get the, he didn't accomplish that. Right. Um, I wrote down a, a single shy, the, the, the four guys that were a single shy. Yeah, because a lot of guys will end up a triple shy of a cycle. Right. Omar Infante, Dan Ugla, Josh Willingham, and Gary Sheffield. And I mentioned the names of Miguel Cabrera, but just what do you think that also means for someone like Luis Arise uh, with that kind of talent around the franchise history to stamp it as the first ever? That's an accomplishment in itself. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, it'll, it'll obviously stand the test of time, but I also think it's funny if you take a look at it. He hasn't reinvented the game, but he went back to the roots of baseball and, like, putting the ball in play. Yep. You know, it's funny. You mentioned some of those names. Ugla, Willingham, Sheffield. Who was the other one? Omar Infante. Okay, Omar Infante is a little different, but those other three were power dudes. Doesn't yeah. surprise me. They ended up a single shy of the cycle. Yeah. They double, tripled, and they homered in a game. They probably went three for four or three for five. Luis Arise turned back the clocks in baseball this year. He had so many base hits. He led the National League. He led the league in base hits. You, you, we, we have seen a shift where baseball has gone away from that, and understandably so, because if you watch the World Series this year, the Texas Rangers win it all. If you look at the postseason... And this is what's interesting to me because this is a totally different conversation about how the Marlins build things moving forward. But if you watch the postseason, teams won how? Home runs. Yep. No ands, ifs, or buts. None. If you can hit the ball out of the ballpark, you are going to win. You're going to get yourself to the postseason. So there's certainly something to be said. You can't listen to people that say homers aren't going to, like, you have to play differently. The Marlins actually played differently this season and got themselves to the postseason. It's clear that they need some more power and some more thump. But Luis Arise is an unbelievable player to complement those type of players Absolutely. if you can get them here. Because you take a look at the cycle, and what does it take? It takes contact. It takes the ability to hit the ball the other way. It takes the ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Big picture, that is terrific. You really can't have too many of those guys because Arise is not a guy that's going to hit you 30 bombs a year. Mm -hmm. But he is an unbelievable complement 
to power hitters because of his ability to get on base. What, especially for the first two months, it felt like four times a night. It was unbelievable. It was unreal. But throughout the course of the season, if you average it out, he's on base two, three times a night. That's you build around that, right? And it's, it's the accomplishment of hitting for this cycle is something that will forever be um, etched in Marlins history. But to me, it's a stepping stone of where the organization could get to and a guy that you can rally around, who can be a face of the franchise amongst many other good players. Um, but it was just, it, it, it's fascinating. And there's a couple more this year. But to see a cycle in a day and age in which baseball is played, that's what's interesting to me. To see a cycle in 2023, it's not 1990. It's, you know, it's not uh, before that where you just put the ball in play. But to do it in this day and age with the velocity from the pitching and all that stuff, is incredible. That to me is what made the whole Arise thing, not to mention it was just a 12th game as a Marlin, even more special. Um, agreed, and, and I know we've kind of hit on this, but it, it really was a snapshot of what we were going to get the entire year. It was the cycle. It was also a, a year where the Marlins did a really nice job against the Phillies. They went seven and six against them during yeah. the season. I know it didn't end the way that Marlins fans wanted, but uh, there was a lot of previewing, I thought, in that moment because, again, there's just there's so much uncertainty, especially like so the first year manager. Mm -hmm. uh, the Marlins were really struggling to score runs. They had a, a lot of injuries as well to start the season with Johnny Cueto, Trevor Rogers. I mean, yeah. there was a lot of adversity early on, and it really showed. And and I, I the, the the point that I agree with the most is when you are trying to set a culture, when you are trying to set a standard, when your best player, which you would argue, I would say was Luis Arise consistently yeah. for 162 yeah. games, when that is your guy that is posting every day, that has the attitude. I mean, there was not one guy that had anything bad to say about Luis Arise. No. Skip had alluded to, he's just, it didn't matter if he was 0 for 4, he would tell guys. We could do a whole episode on him telling his managers when he was going to hit a home run. So I, I, to start a culture year one, Skip Schumacher, uh, I, I don't know if there's another guy you would want to start your team around as far as just overall baseball on and off the field sort of personality than Luis oh, Arise. I mean, he's, he's very confident. He, he's confident in his ability. He knows who he is as a player and he plays for his teammates. And that is just so darn important, especially yep. when you know as a manager, if you bring it back to the manager, that you have a guy in there because you don't want to insert yourself in that clubhouse every day. That's their space. You have your space, and everybody comes together at 6 o'clock to play. But if you have a guy like that and a leader who's willing to speak up and he backs everything that he says with his actions on the field, to your point, that's a guy you rally around. That's a guy you build around. Now, the question will certainly be moving forward. You know, he, He's not under team control for another five years, and that... Um, his, his time potentially could come to an end in the near future, or can the Marlins lock him up, right? Mm -hmm. can, can he be a guy that you build around for a decade? Mm -hmm. Is Luis Arise and the Miami Marlins a forever partner with one another? Is this his forever home until he retires? Hopefully, because that's, there aren't many of those guys. No. There are not many of those guys that are going to work that hard, who are true to themselves, who are even better people than they are players, and uh, unbelievable person to the community. Um, has a beautiful, unbelievable young family, and um, he loves Miami, and I think Miami very quickly um, in a magical season uh, started to love him back in a hurry. So that was, that was amazing. Glad you mentioned his family because this was like the cherry on top yeah. of the night. Uh, Luis Arise postgame was speaking. Actually, it was first with Kelly Sacco of Bally Sports, and uh, Kelly asked him what it meant to him, who he'd want to thank, and he thanked his family but specifically his wife yeah. and announced that yeah. him and his wife are expecting. Uh, so what a way to top it off a cycle along with another milestone, um, you know, expecting a child. Yeah. I mean, I just, I just, it's, it's, it's the type of guy he is. I, I, and I think we don't have to tell people that because I think fans came to understand who he was. He was such a generous guy with his time, not just with us, but with the fans. And I thought that was, that was so much fun to watch and so much fun to see throughout the course of the season. Um, that's a guy that deserves the world, man. He deserves everything that he has coming his way professionally, personally, and his, his wife, uh, and his life, excuse me. And again, an unbelievable wife and a family. Um, you know, and just as a fan, I, I hope he's a Miami Marlin for a very long time because from a baseball perspective, it is certainly a guy that you can build around.
Well, that about does it. We really appreciate you watching Marlins Rerun. This is going to be one of five episodes. We're going to talk, of course, uh, after the documentary that uh, our creative team is doing an incredible job of. Kyle and I will talk to you soon, but again, you can follow us at Marlins Radio. This is also available on marlins.com. We're going to put it into a podcast as well. So we're happy you join us, and we can't wait to be with you all off-season long.